Thank you for that. And also on Capitol Hill, Senator Martin Heinrich of New Mexico, a member of the Senate Appropriations Committee. Senator, great to have you here. Is the Senate going to pass this short-term spending bill this evening? We should pass that later this evening. And then we're simultaneously working to tidy up all of those individual appropriations bills that Manu talked about. The other thing uh, that we heard when it comes to action in the Senate is from President Biden just a few moments ago. He was in Brownsville, Texas, talking about the southern border, the crisis happening there. He called on the Senate actually to reconsider that bipartisan bill that had been negotiated, which was not just about foreign aid, but also uh, on the southern border as well. Is that something that you would support? I would wholeheartedly support that. Um, you know, I've been sort of left at the altar three different times now on border security and Im immigration uh, work in the Senate. In 2013, we actually passed a big bill that had 68 votes, uh, only to see Republicans in the House refuse to put it on the floor, even though it had the votes to pass. We're now facing a similar dynamic where Donald Trump would rather have an issue than solve a problem, and that's what scared many of my Republican colleagues away from the negotiating table. But we have a very good product that would really address the fundamental problems we have in the asylum law that are leading to the challenges that we're facing across the border. No, yeah, it would tighten a lot of those uh, asylum laws. And President Biden saying there would even give him the authority to shut down the border if the crossings hit a certain point. The other thing that bill had in it was aid for Ukraine. And, and I was just in Kiev speaking with President Zelensky about how dire they need that yeah. aid. He said that, yes, they will suffer setbacks on the battlefield, that it will increase increase Russia's chances of winning this war if they don't get more aid. And last night we were talking to your colleague on the Republican side of the aisle, Senator Mitt Romney, about what happens if Ukraine doesn't get that aid. I want you to listen to what he told me. I was just in Ukraine uh, sitting down with President Zelensky. They are deeply worried that, that your colleagues in the House, Republicans in the House, aren't going to send them any more aid, that they are going to stand in the way. Uh, I mean, what responsibility do you believe Republicans will bear for setbacks on the battlefield for Ukraine if they don't pass any more aid? Well, if, if we don't pass aid for Ukraine, then I think Ukraine uh, has a very difficult time preserving their uh, geographic integrity and, and life. You're going to have a lot of people. Uh, who lose their life as Russia runs across uh, Ukraine. And, and that will make it very clear to people around the world that you really can't trust America's word. Do you agree with that, that, that it'll tell people in other countries that, that they can't trust the United States? I wholeheartedly agree with everything that Romney said there. Um, this will embolden Putin. It will embolden other adversaries around the world. And we have a very simple choice. We can support our allies in Ukraine or you will see Russia continue to move. And after Ukraine, we're talking about countries that are in NATO, countries like Poland. We have a treaty responsibility to not just support those countries with arms and, and financial support, but with our actual soldiers. So uh, I, I can't stress just how incredibly important it is for the House to take up this Ukrainian aid package. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell announced yesterday that he's stepping down from Republican leadership. Obviously, I know that you are a Democrat, but but he is someone who has pushed for aid to Ukraine. He's been a voice against what what part of his party, certainly the, the MAGA side of his party, ha has wanted on Ukraine aid, which is no more funding and no more aid to them. The fact that, that he's stepping down and we're seeing comments like from the House Freedom Caucus, obviously over in the House, calling him uh, the co-majority leader, Mitch McConnell, implying that, that he's more in line with Democrats and Republicans and said no need to wait till November to replace him, that they should immediately elect a Republican minority leader. Obviously, Mitch McConnell is a lifelong Republican and has helped stack the Supreme Court with three Trump justices, but we'll get to that later. But I wonder what you think the next Republican leader in the Senate will look like and if you have any concerns about that. I think it's a very open question. And uh, depending on who uh, becomes the next major minority leader for the Republicans will determine the tenor of the Senate. And we've already seen these extreme MAGA elements in the House and how they have made it impossible for a Republican speaker uh, to pass even the most basic procedural moves forward, like a rule, which is necessary to pass a law. You could see that sort of thing seep into the Senate. And uh, that would be 
I just think it would bode very poorly for governance and for being able to do the, the basic minimums of governance. So you think it will it could fundamentally change kind of how the institution itself works? It certainly could. And I think there will be a debate within the Republican caucus about whether they want a leader who can navigate, who can uh, compromise, or whether, whether they want a leader who just wants to make a point continuously. Senator, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me.